I don't talk enough about my nostalgia for the cable channel Nickelodeon. Maybe it was because I was introduced to it later on in my childhood when me and my family moved to Virginia in 1998. Or maybe it's because Cartoon Network admittedly had the bigger impact on me. But as a child who grew up with the network during the Silver Age, I think one of the most memorable years of Nickelodeon during my time was 2000. There was a lot of stuff that happened that year, and we're going to go through it all. Show debuts, events, specials, movies. So let's not waste any time. Let's get started. But first... Today's video is sponsored by Liquid IV. Liquid IV is a hot new hydration drink that keeps you hydrated throughout the day. And if you work in a hot kitchen like me, you'll definitely need it. One stick of Liquid IV to 16 ounces of water gives you 2-3 to three times more hydration than water alone. You don't have to take my word for it. Take a look at the science of cellular transport technology designed to enhance rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients into the bloodstream. Not only is it good for you, but they taste good as well. They come in all kinds of flavors, like passion fruit, lemon lime, and tangerine. My favorite is the passion fruit, and I have trouble sleeping at night, so the sleep multiplier drink is very effective and I wake up feeling so good. Liquid IV is a great charitable company. With each purchase, they donate to someone in need selling over 16 million servings globally and counting. You get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the promo code 47 Cartoon Guy. Again, go to liquidiv.com and use the promo code 47 Cartoon Guy. Thanks again to Liquid IV for sponsoring this video. Now, on with the show. January 1st, 2000 marked the beginning of the new millennium. At the Y2K turned out to be a hoax, everyone's minds were at ease as he looked forward to a new decade filled with endless possibilities. There was a lot going on this year, such as the US presidential election between George W. Bush and Al Gore, Vermont becoming the third state in the US to legalize civil unions to same-sex couples, the much-publicized international custody battle of Alain Gonzalez, the last new Peanuts comic strip released in February after the death of creator Charles Schultz. The 2000 Summer Olympics are held in Sydney, Australia, and Time Warner would merge with online service provider American Online, AOL for short, and would later go down in history as one of Time Warner, now Warner Media's, disastrous company mergers. But like I said, one of them. Debuting this year, PlayStation 2, Pepsi Twist, DeviantArt, Windows 2000, the Wonder Ball, and Harry Potter and a Goblet of Fire. Dominating the charts this year, Britney Spears, Faith Hill, Destiny's Child, Santana and the Product GMB, Matchbox 20, and Cisco. Popular memes this year, The Hamster Dance, and What's Up? Meanwhile in theaters, audiences were being entertained by Russell Crowe and Gladiator, Julia Roberts as Aaron Brockovich, Pokemon the Movie, Castaway, X-Men, Scary Movie, and Ron Howard's The Grinch. In video games, we saw the debuts of The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask, Jet Set Radio, The Sims, and Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Now let's get to television, where shows like Malcolm in the Middle, CSI, Dark Angel, and Gilmore Girls debuted, and a popular trend that would unfortunately define the whole decade, reality TV. Survivor also debuted this year, and became one of the biggest shows at the time, it was parodied and referenced to Kingdom Come. You are like this close to getting voted off the island. As for kids programming, Cartoon Network would debut their ninth original cartoon cartoon, Sheep in a Big City, and Disney Channel will introduce us to Shia LaBeouf and the tween sitcom Even Stevens, as well as shows for Saturday morning on the broadcast networks, such as ABC's Buzz Lightyear of Star Command and Teacher's Pet, and the WB's Static Shock and Jackie Chan Adventures while PBS had a whole block called the Bookworm Brunch. And then there's Nickelodeon, the first network aimed exclusively for children of all ages, with a long line of Nicktoons, sitcoms, specials, and more. They ended the 90s celebrating their 20th anniversary and introducing SpongeBob, who will become their longest running franchise. And as the 2000s approach, it was time to show what else they had up their sleeves. They kicked off the new year with the special Nickelodeon. This was a five hour commercial free documentary 
that aired the whole day on Nick and sister channel Noggin and featured kids all over the world as they talk about their hopes and dreams for the future. Watching this at a young age, it does make you realize how kids have different experiences growing up and listening to how optimistic and passionate they were about the future, it makes you feel awful how much everything is screwed up. All that misguided optimism. <sighs> One of the new shows that debuted was Slime Time Live. This was a game show hosted by Dave Azer and usually aired as filler between shows. Fun fact, it was one of the last Nick shows filmed at Nickelodeon Studios at Universal Studios Florida. And in it, the contestant would do special challenges that usually ended up with him or her getting pie to the face and slime. Lots and lots of slime. There are also interactive activities too. My favorite being a match game with various Nicktoons characters and if you were at home would call in to try and make a match and win a prize. If they got it wrong, Dave would get a pie to the face. Other highlights include the Big Shabuzi, Super Sloppy Slime Off, and Celebrity Guests, usually promoting something or performing. The show would air until 2004. The classic show Double Dare would get a reboot. Around this time, Double Dare 2000, though unfortunately no Mark Summers, instead being hosted by voice actor Jason Harris Katz with all new sets and bigger physical challenges like the Triple Dare Challenge and the Obstacle Course, known here as the Slopsicle Course. Unfortunately, this incarnation would be short-lived and be canceled that same year and survive reruns until 2001. But if you weren't impressed by 2000, you could still watch reruns of the original on Nick Gas. Nickelodeon Movies released their fourth film, Snow Day, which was originally a planned Adventures of Pete and Pete movie, but scrapped into a standalone story. The story, as the title suggests, is about a snow day where everything seems to be happening. A weatherman tries to get people to watch his station, a nerdy dweeb tries to impress a popular girl, and a girl and her friends try to extend the snow day. It starred Chris Elliott, a young Josh Peck, the girl from Max Keeble's Big Move, and Chevy Chase, who clearly just wanted to get his paycheck. The movie did okay at the box office, and is now pretty much forgotten. But hey, it kickstarted Haku's singing career, so there's that. Perhaps Nickelodeon movie's biggest hit that year was the Rugrats movie sequel, Rugrats in Paris, and Nickelodeon promoted this movie all year, both on air and online. If you had the Rugrats Discover America VHS, you could see a featurette at the end of the video to showing the making of the film. The film was released November 17, 2000, to popular reviews, as well as a decent box office, and many Rugrats fans declared it the best of the three films. I have a personal history of this film, and I plan to cover it in a retrospective later on, so I'll stop here. In 1999, Nickelodeon's parent company Viacom brought CBS for $35.6 billion, and with that, the Nickelodeon shows became exclusive to CBS's new revamped Saturday morning schedule, starting in 2000, with Nick Jr. on CBS, and two years later, more Nick shows were added to the block, but only ones that met the EI requirements so no cat dog or invader sim. In addition, the Rugrats movie made its debut on CBS in November 2001. Starting in March this year, Nickelodeon would show retype credits on the left side of the screen, which promos would play mirroring broadcasts and cable networks, and this same practice is still used on the channel to this day. Debuting this year was the Canadian teen drama Caitlin's Way, about a rebellious teenage girl who lives on a ranch with her aunt and her family. This show was not on my radar when it first aired, which is understandable. I was like 7 years old and this was meant for older children. I do think it's time to give it another chance to see if it holds up. Then there's the Brothers Garcia, sort of like a Latina version of the Wonder Years. It features the life of the Garcia family, as narrated by John Leguizamo as the adult version of young Larry, the main character of the show. We see the life of Larry and his family and the day to day situations they get themselves into. The show had a decent run, and even broke new ground as one of the few shows with all Latina cast and crew. It ended in 2003 with the TV movie Mysteries of Maya. Most recently, it was announced that the show was being revived as a sequel series, surprisingly, on HBO Max. Then there was No One Knows Best. Don't remember it? Well, you ain't missing much. Two new Nicktoons debuted this year, the short-lived Pelswick and As Told by Ginger. Hellswick was a show about a boy who's paraplegic and the day-to-day -day life he lives. It was based on a book by creator John Callahan, who's also paraplegic. The show had a very short run, 
and didn't have much of a life in reruns, and Nickelodeon barely acknowledges it now. Though when you look at a premise at a paraplegic boy who wants to be treated like everyone else, today with more and more acceptance towards people with disabilities, it would probably work better if it was made today. Also, as told by Ginger, the show about a teenage girl, Ginger Foutley, and her journey through middle and later high school. Much like Caitlin's Way, I remember finding this a bit boring when it first aired. Again, I was like 7. But watching it again, I really applaud how seriously it treated its young audience. The show handled heavy themes like peer pressure, addiction, parental abandonment, depression, the worst, and not in a way that talks down to them either. Not to mention continuing storylines and having characters switch outfits in every episode. That was pretty unheard of at the time. This was another Nick show from the hit animation powerhouse, Classy Shupo, at the end of his run in 2004. In addition, Nick still had their most popular shows on the channel, from animated hits like Rugrats, Hey Arnold, Cat Dog, Wild Thornberries, Doug, Rocket Power, to live action phase like All That, Keenan and Kel, The Amanda Show, Cousin Skeeter, and The 100 Deeds of Eddie McDowell. Another mainstay on the channel was SpongeBob SquarePants, his second year on the channel. And the show was really starting to pick up in popularity. One of Nickelodeon's earliest and most controversial shows, Ren and Stimpy, returned to the network after a two year absence to air reruns in the summer. For much younger viewers, Nick Jr. had a whole lineup dedicated to preschoolers, with hit shows like Blues Clues, Little Bear, Maisie, and Franklin, to then recent shows like Little Bear and Kipper. Blues Clues was the most popular show on the block. It had a slew of merchandise, a live stage show, and a directed video movie both released that same year. It made host Steve Burns a household name. He was very popular with parents, especially moms. Introduced in 1994, the block's mascot slash host was Face. He was a, well, you know, a face. And he would often announce what was coming up and sing songs. He was voiced by Chris Phillips, who's best known as the voice of Roger Klotz in the Disney version of Doug. Debuting this year on Nick Jr was Nevada's Maggie and a Ferocious Beast and Dora the Explorer. The latter takes place in a computer where a seven-year-old Latina girl and her friend, a monkey named Boots, takes young viewers on interactive journeys. The show will become another huge hit for Nick Jr. for years to come. From June to August, reruns of the PBS series Shiny Time Station also aired on Nick Jr. in participation for the film Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Let's not forget the late night block, Nick at Night, Nickelodeon's nighttime block that showed many classic sitcoms of the past. This is where I first saw sitcoms like I Love Lucy, Happy Days, The Brady Bunch, and Gilligan's Island. I'll never forget laughing my ass off watching Gilligan. New blocks and marathons include March 2 Mania, Nick and Night Block Party Summer, Nick 2's Afternoon Snack Pack, You Pick Monday, and SpongeBob's Nick 2 Summer Splash. The latter was a weekday afternoon block hosted by the cast of SpongeBob SquarePants as they introduced three-hour marathons of popular Nicktoons throughout the week. Monday will be Rugrats, Tuesdays will be Rocket Power, Wednesdays the Royal Thornberries, Thursdays Hey Arnold, and Fridays Roggles Modern Life, and later Cat Dog. It was a popular summer blog on the network, replacing the previous year's Henry and June Summer Jam. It will last until 2001. Nickelodeon wouldn't be complete without his popular Saturday Night Block, Snick. But there were some changes. You see, in 1989, Snick was revamped as the Snick House. It was hosted by Nick Cannon, one of the faces of the network at the time, as well as a cast member on all that. It took place in some Beverly Hills mansion with a DJ, and it featured appearances from celebrities and music groups who were usually perform, like NSYNC, The 18s, Baja Men, what, no B2K? The Snick House Pick of the Week was where viewers can go on Nick.com and choose their favorite video. And I have to admit, the commercial showing snippets of the videos was pretty much my first exposure to pop music. In July, Snick House was dropped, and Snick returned with all new bumpers and graphics. Special Events Well, in April, there was the 13th Annual Kids Choice Awards, hosted by Rosie O'Donnell, with performances by Jennifer Lopez, NSYNC, The Goo Goo Dolls, and Jessica Simpson and Nick Lachey, with cameos from celebrities and Nick stars. Highlights include Awkward David Arquette, Spongebob's first appearance at the awards, and whatever this is. Also, this year was infamous for having Rugrats win favorite cartoon, while Pokemon, one of the hottest things in the world at the time, was also nominated. I'm sure Pokemon fans took it well. Other notable events this year include Kids Pick the President, 
the Nick takes over your school sweepstakes, and the LFO, Nickelodeon, all that summer tour. While other kids' channels have movie blocks like Cartoon Network's Cartoon Theater and Disney Channel's Zoom Movies, Nickelodeon's Nickflix block ended early this year. Throughout the summer and fall, they were on several major TV movies based on the hit shows, such as reruns of the Caitlin's Way movie Stray to Animorphs movie Changes, the journey of Alan Strange TV movie Alien Vacation, and premieres of Cousin Skeeter, New Kids on a Planet, Keenan and Kel, Two Heads Are Better Than None, Cat Dog, The Great Parent Mystery, and Rugrats, Acorn Nuts, and Dibey Butts. Let's go over these real quick. New Kids on a Planet has Skeeter, Bobby, Nina, and Skeeter's crush, Nicole, going to a space academy in Florida, and Skeeter being Skeeter, gets the game stuck on a planet after sneaking on a space shuttle. After watching it for the first time in decades, it's a lot weirder than I remember, with funny looking aliens, Dick Miller, and this plot about a Martian race who's planning to replace teens with alien clones. And I forgot how annoying Skeeter can get. Two Heads Are Better Than None is one of my favorite season finales ever. It has Kel stowing away on a Rockmore family vacation, and hijinks and spooky shenanigans ensue. It still has its typical Keenan and Kel humor, but what's interesting about this special is the more horror elements while still maintaining the comedy, not unlike Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. There's some jokes in this I'm surprised they got away with, and that image of the headless knight with the red light blaring in the background, that scared the crap out of me and stuck with me for years. There's also guest appearances from Michael Berryman from The Hills Have Eyes and legendary comedian Milton Berle, one of his final film roles. To talk about what happens in this movie is a mouthful, but I'm not going to spoil it. I recommend checking it out. Cat Dog, The Great Parent Mystery features our two heroes on a quest to find their adopted parents. I always love these characters and it's great to see them in anything, especially with the incredible voice work from Jim Cummings and Tom Kenny and the two play off each other perfectly. And it's nice to see them finally have their happy ending as well. As for Acorn Nuts and Dibey Butts, taking place before the events of Rugrats in Paris, it features the babies going through many changes in their lives, especially with Chucky's dad, Chaz, moving on and dating after the death of his wife. Pretty standard Rugrats fare, but I think I love the heartwarming moments more, especially concerning Chucky and Chaz. All these movies premiered on SNCC, with the characters hosting, and the following year, we were rerun in the summer as Saturday Night Netflix. Another made for TV movie that aired was The Long Forgotten Cry Baby Lane, about two boys who befriend a local undertaker, played by Frank Lagella, a Masters of the Universe fame, who tells them ghost stories. He tells them a tale of two Siamese twins, one good, the other evil, who were buried by their father when they died. When one of the boys hold a seance in the cemetery where the good twin is buried, he accidentally wakes up the bad twin, who wreaks havoc on the town. The movie aired once around Halloween season on SNCC, hosted by Clarissa herself, Melissa Joan Hart, and was forgotten for years and disowned by Nickelodeon, until they gained a reputation for being that scary movie that aired on Nick you forgot about. And many years later, it aired Halloween 2011 on the T-Nick block, the 90s or all that. YouTuber Channel Surfer did a video on the history of the movie, so check this video out when you get a minute. Nickelodeon received the makeover in September, with a new schedule as well as new bumpers. The We'll Be Right Back and Coming Up Next bumpers were now replaced by quick cuts of still images of the shows that aired, accompanied with wacky sound effects. This would last until 2002. Also around the same time, Nickelodeon would welcome their newest acquired show, Warner Brothers Animation's Peaky in the brain, and boy oh boy did they want you to know they nabbed the rights. <laughs> but still, it's kind of cool they got Rob Paulson and Marisa Marsh for this promo. I command you to come here to Nickelodeon to watch us. Pinky in the Brain, weekdays starting September 4th. Pinky in the Brain, coming Monday, September 4th at 6, 5 central, right here on Nickelodeon. Hi mom! Narf! Also throughout the year, Nickelodeon and his characters can be seen everywhere in kids media. Toys, games, promotes for kids' meals, snack foods, video games like Nick 2's Racing, theme parks such as the Universal Studios, as well as a new section at Paramount's Kings Dominion called Nickelodeon Central, which ran from 2000 to 2009. And let's not forget Nick Magazine and Nick.com still going strong. Well, there you have it Nickelodeon in the year 2000. It's been a lot of fun going through these old promos, commercials, and specials again, almost as a weird time capsule. It's obvious I'm not Nickelodeon's target audience anymore, but I'm glad current generations of kids have a network they can call their own, just like I did. Got a favorite memory of Nickelodeon? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, 
I'm 47 Cartoon Guy, and I gotta fly. If you want to support this series and many other videos, click the link below to my Patreon. You get a special credit, early access, shout out to your channel or blog, even a commission by me. Every dollar goes into the production of these videos for software, research, DVDs, as well as help put food on the table. If you're not able to donate, you can also help by liking, commenting, subscribing, and clicking the little bell icon. I thank you, and I gotta fly.